Welcome to The Boiling Point. I'm Richie Ware. This is Brian Grindstaff. And Brian is our uh, parts manager and like to talk a little bit about feed water today. So Brian, why don't you first tell us a little bit about what feed water um, is? Uh, sure. Uh, feed water, of course, is the water that act is actually put into the boiler to create the steam. Okay. Um, so there's different ways of doing that. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's on-off pumps uh, and on-off feed controls that basically you'll have a control that says, hey, turn the pump on. The, the pump will run until it satisfies uh, whatever low water condition that the boiler is calling for or, um, and shut off. Or you've got a modulating option mm -hmm. that uh, is a continuous run. Your pumps basically run continuously uh, nonstop and it, it is basically tuned with the steam rate of your boiler. As your boiler runs up and down throughout its cycles, uh, it's got controls that tell, tell it how much water is needed in the boiler. Right. So your pumps are continuously running and your modulating feed water valve actually uh, modulates with that steaming rate to allow different flow rates into the boiler. Okay, now there's different types of uh, modulating feed water valves out there. Yep. Um, this is the Wear Mod V, and we kind of do that a little bit different and I'd like to maybe just go to here and tell why. What, what is the difference and why would you use something like this? Yeah, and we've, we've used, even in our rental fleet, we've used different iterations of modulating feed water valves over the years. And um, we went uh, from a Globe design, uh, Honeywell Dessert brand. Um, we had issues with those leaking by. They've had uh, seal problems where they've got a four bolt top to them that they just continuously leak and leak and leak. Uh, so we were always searching for a better way to to do the modulating feed where we didn't have these nuisance repairs for our rental fleet. Mm. And, and one thing that was always sought, sought after was uh, a 100% a shut off repeatable valve that you didn't have a lot of issues with linkages or leak by or leaks at the bonnet. And what we, what we did is we designed our own brand mm -hmm. with, with Honeywell motors and QuadraPower motors uh, to really give us that reliability that we were looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, the valves that we use now are a Marwin brand valve. Mm -hmm. They're V-ports. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they allow for 100% bubble tight shutoff. Um, and they're really, you know, basically just bulletproof. Mm -hmm. for, for our rental fleet and for the customers that we sell these to, we hardly get any kind of warranty complaints. I mean, it's a very low return rate. I right. mean, we put these things in service. We've sold thousands of these valves now, and we've hardly had any of them come back. What's the, what is the whole deal with the V-port? Why is, why is it that way? Yeah, the, the V-port is actually, you, you'll see a notching in here um, that, that's basically narrow on one end and wide on the other. And that's what gives you your characterized flow as your boiler needs more water, it starts to open up toward that bigger end, mm -hmm. and it gives you it gives you more flow rate through that bigger bigger hole or bigger orifice in the valve. Okay. Um, as you need to turn that that flow rate down and keep the water level more steady in the boiler, it, it starts to tune toward the smaller end. Okay. So you you get a a good control even flow through that characterized operation. So without the V port, it's actually totally open, of course, um, on, on yeah. others, and yeah. why, why, why is Some, that bad, or is it even bad, or is it just not a good control? Yeah, it, you, you get no control. I okay. mean, other people will use, uh, like a knife gate that's, that can modulate a little mm -hmm. bit, a globe valve with, uh, with cages in it that, are, that have machined orifices, they can modulate a little bit, but a lot of stuff that we see are just open valves. They're full port valves, and there's no control. I mean, mm. it's basically... Uh, they're they're relying on the ball to to control that flow, and that's not really a great way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, you you get leak problems, you get seal problems with those types of valves. Having yeah. a V port and having that steady control characterized flow is is really ideal for keeping your water level smooth and and consistent in your boiler. Now, uh, is this the only option, or do you have any other types of um, valves to go with it? 
Yeah, I mean, we've we've got uh, different valves. We do do full port valves for deaerators okay. um, because they don't necessarily need the, the characterized flow that the boilers do. Okay. Um, so we do do that. Mm -hmm. um, for, for our boiler applications, we supply these valves anywhere from one inch up to two, two inch, pretty much covers a large amount of, of flow rates that's required. Right. And we do all of our sizing in-house. Our customers can come to us and say, hey, this is my boiler, here's my bump pump pressure, which valve would you recommend? And we make a selection based on what, what the customer needs. Okay. And, and based off that, we'll select a valve, uh, and then we'll have different options based on how uh, the valve is controlled on what motors we supply. Okay. Uh, we've got 24 volt motors, we've got 120 volt motors, um, we've got pneumatic motors, mm. pneumatic actuators. Mm. So whatever the customer's requirement is, whether that's a four to 20 signal, that is used off a pressure transmitter or a McDonald Miller with a 7B that's a 0 to 135 ohm, we can do all of those. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and so why would you need, just, just to, you know, to, to talk a little bit to, to everyone about, um, about this, why would you need a pneumatic? What's, what's the reason? A pneumatic, um, generally pneumatics, uh, we, we tend to use those when the valve sizes get in the upper range because they require more torque. Okay. Um, another reason to use a pneumatic actuator is the actual speed of the response. Uh, these motors can take 30 seconds to actuate open and close. So there's a response time there as, as things are moving. It, it's slowly moving and slowly bringing things on, which is great because, you know, that keeps an even flow. But, you know, sometimes uh, the evaporation rate is such that you're trying to make a lot of steam really fast. And when you're doing that, you're draining the boiler really fast. You don't have time for this to actuate that slowly. Okay. You use a pneumatic valve that's basically an instant position. Okay. So it's constantly moving a little bit faster to keep up with your steaming rate. Awesome. All right, well, there you have it. Brian's been over everything. And you can see that we do have, uh, that Brian's got the knowledge actually that's uh, for these valves. And so we'd love to uh, talk to you. So we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point. Well, appreciate Brian hanging out with us, talk a little bit about the feed water valve. Check out boilerwarehouse.com. You can see that we actually have everything that's needed to build a feed water system. So check it out on boilerwarehouse.com. Well, it's baseball season. Go Dodgers, getting ready to open up. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. If you don't mind, maybe subscribe to the YouTube channel. And as always, share a video. We'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.